Welcome to episode number 25 of the Broad Points Podcast. I am your host, the Broad That Points, the Broad With The Points. I am Tyler the Lady. And for those of you who are just joining me, welcome. Hey, check it out. We're doing a podcast. For those of you that have been with me for all 25 episodes, congratulations, we did it. I built it and you came. (laughs) So thank you for your ongoing support and let's friggin' jump into this podcast. I'm so excited. Thank you for waiting an extra couple of weeks while I traveled to Seattle. I had strongly considered bringing my laptop and my microphone and and doing the whole shebang from up there and recording. I even thought about pre-recording all of them. And then I just thought episode 25, man. I need to I need to be here. I want to be here, right? I want to be able to reflect on 25 episodes, right? To think about, you know, what we're sharing, what we're creating here, the community that we're building. And so I'm just so pumped to be here. Thank you again for your patience. I appreciate you. If no one has told you recently, you're awesome. And I love you. (laughs) And, you know, I paid an absurd amount of money for a coaching program that left me with a bad taste in my mouth, honestly, about just a lot of different things. But one thing that I took away from that course that has stuck with me, and I think it'll stick with me forever, is this idea of shifting my perspective away from everything being the hardest thing of my life. Have you ever done that? (laughs) Have you ever, like, been doing something and then realized that, like, no, the world's not going to end if you don't finish the dishes in five minutes? (laughs) It's just dishes. It's fine. You know, your house isn't going to collapse in on you if, you know, maybe you didn't put your clothes immediately away after you folded them. It's okay. It's okay. Wherever you're at right now, it's perfect for you. Right? So don't question where you are, right? Don't don't question it. And instead, choose how you want to respond to it. Right? And so I I have been going over this for a while now because traveling's hard. Like seeing a bunch of different people who have different points of views and different beliefs, it can be taxing on yourself. It can be taxing on your spirit. And me personally, I'm a highly sensitive being. I can really feel other people's energies. And so I have to remind myself of my mental story, right? Because everybody else is going to be out there and, and they think you're a part of their story. But the truth is they're a part of yours. And so we don't have to let them pull us away, right? Sweep us away off into the current. We can actually choose to swim and stand on our own. And so just a little thing that I like to tell myself is you get to have it all and it gets to be easy, right? Everything you want, you can have it all and it can be easy. It gets to be easy, Not everything we do, we have to bash our heads into the wall in order to make happen, right? (laughs) So with that, let's go ahead and let's jump into the fundamental phrase for the week. 
because you waited an extra two weeks if you're doing this live with me. And if not, you just deserve a fundamental phrase. (laughs) The fundamental phrase is, we either grow or we die. We either grow or we die. And there are just so many things, right, when we talk about growing or dying that we can refer to. The first thing that I'm thinking of is muscles in my body. I've been working out, right? I I like to walk and I like to run a little bit. Honestly, running is not my favorite. I'm not going to lie to you guys there. But I've been doing it. Well, I was doing it until my plantar fascia just decided to be a real pain in my butt. (laughs) And the thing about muscles is when you don't use them, they atrophy, right? They freeze up, they shrink, they die. You lose that that mind-body connection of how to utilize the muscles within your own body. Like, that alone, right? If we're not using the vehicle, (laughs) if you're not using your car, right? Somebody needs to go out and start that car up. Someone needs to to just make sure that that battery stay in charge, that that engine is still purring. Because if you go back and there's no energy left, no energy left in something. There's not the ability to grow. There's not the ability to expand. And maybe something isn't so noticeably visible, right? Maybe something isn't, oh, physically affecting you. Well, hey, we could talk about plants any day of the week, right? I, I have a, a love and I want to say hate relationship with plants just because I don't understand all of them. Like it's really, really hard for me right now getting into plants and trying to experience new forms of life and different species of plants. Not all of them make it. (laughs) I am not the woman with the green thumb. Not everything in my house may live for as long as it potentially could if a gardener or farmer was tending to them, right? But I just try to be with them. I just try to understand. I really feel like there's just so much opportunity around us to be able to learn, not even just from people, but from plants, from animals, just so many different opportunities out there. And It really is about growing. It really is about expanding and and what we're leaving behind. And that's why I started this podcast, right? I knew that I had more to share. I knew that I wanted to put out a little bit more than a positive social media post once in a blue moon, right? I wanted people to be able to hear me. I wanted to expand my reach. I wanted to be able to expand my network, my community, to build relationships with people who are after the same thing. You want to work on you. Maybe you want to hear me. Hey, what's up? I love that. (laughs) I never hope for anything for anybody, but hey, If you can get something out of this podcast, even if it's just a smile from hearing the sound of my voice, that's it. That's the message. All we're trying to do is empower you to be you, to trust yourself. In all these times when people are telling you not to trust yourself, when maybe even you are telling yourself not to trust yourself, you build that relationship. You maintain that trust. It's give and take. We have to show up in order for things to move, in order for progress to made. Action has to join the party. 
right? We need some action here. If it's plants, we're watering. We're giving nutrients. We're talking to it. Oh my gosh, I had this friend that I used to talk to on the phone all the time. I actually wonder if he listens to this. If you do, friend, and you remember that we used to talk on the phone all of the time, and we'd talk about dancing around and talking to our plants. We would talk about talking to our plants. And I name all of my plants, regardless of whether or not they're going to live. I name them all, right? And I think it's important because we get to talk to them. We, everything is a living thing around us. And the sound of your voice to plants, you can truly tell that plants are happier, And, you know, my good old friend Bob Ross talking about happy trees when he's painting, the trees can be happy. And I really do feel like, you know, this myth of human supremacy, the fact that we are better than anything else on this planet is just such a joke to me because I think that we're all equals. Every being, every plant, every everything We're all equals. We all deserve love. We all deserve attention. We all deserve the nutrients that we need in order to survive. Survival is attached to our growth. Without growing, we find ourselves in these same I'm going to say ridiculous patterns because I've noticed some ridiculous patterns in my life that I have not been a fan of. I've noticed some people being dismissive of me. I've noticed people disrespecting my boundaries. And to that, I have to say, stand up for yourself, you guys. Stand up for yourself, right? What do you want in your life? What do you want to see in your life? And not only what do you want to see in your life, but who do you want in your life to influence the things, right? I've fallen into some real bad patterns in the past. In the past, I have, I'm going to say escaped because that's how it feels, I escaped an abusive relationship and it's hard to leave people that we love even when they hurt us. I couldn't tell you why. I didn't study the psychology on it. I'm speaking from experience here, but what I know is that I had to leave that in order to survive. And in that relationship, mentally, emotionally, verbally, I endured some things that I don't believe any person should have to endure. I was not allowed to hang out with my own family without being accused of cheating on someone. I was not allowed to leave the house to walk my dog. I wasn't allowed to go to the gym. My body, it started to fall apart, you guys. When I'm talking about muscles atrophy, like from experience, I could not move my hips. Physically, my body was telling me, Tyler, you are stuck. You're stuck and you're dying. You can barely move. It hurts to breathe. It hurts to go up the stairs. Like, if you can't leave, if you can't feel confident in yourself knowing that you are not cheating on the person that you're in a relationship with when you're hanging out with your mother, it's a sign, right? And there's physical signs, too, that accompany these things that we won't get into. But if you're experiencing any sort of trauma any sort of pain, I want you to know that you have the ability to stand up for yourself. You have the ability to leave any situation or relationship that is not serving you. 
and also habits, right? Like we could, we could talk about people and we could cut out a whole bunch of people, but we also need to look at our habits, right? Because if we don't speak up, if we don't take action on what we are noticing, right? Noticing is step number one. Noticing the fact that these patterns are happening over and over again, people are being dismissive, people are being rude, uh, maybe you're you're doing something in your life repetitively and you're it's just not serving you, it's just wasting time and mental capacity. Stand up for yourself because if you don't speak up, we're withholding opportunities for growth for everyone, for yourself to know that you have the strength and for someone else to get the feedback that they need because I'm sorry, but like that is needed. People can't just go around and be dismissive and rude and abusive to other people. And you shouldn't do it to yourself either. (laughs) And I say shouldn't there, and I know we, we shouldn't should because should is good with shame on it, but could you imagine a world where we're not beating ourselves up, where we're not taking this crap, where we're accepting these opportunities for growth to say, hey, I don't think that that's how I want my life to look. And then changing it, right? Talk to yourself in a nice way. Just notice what's happening. And right now with my planner fascia, I I like to stand and record this podcast sometimes. Sometimes I'll sit, but today it was a stand day. We're taking a stand. Stand up for yourself. Live it. Live it, guys. Can't just talk about it. You got to live it. And so I'm standing here for you. I'm standing up for myself. And I am bringing full awareness to all four corners of my feet. (laughs) I have to say, just like, honestly, big shout out to yoga with Adrienne. Because I, I love the freeness of it. I believe that yoga should be free for everyone, like, and I, I'm going to put some shame on that because the fact that it's not and people are charging an arm and a leg for something that I think could be so beneficial for people, hey, whatever, moving on, yoga with Adrian. she's super funny, she lives in Austin, Texas, and she is just so approachable, she makes yoga just seem like anyone can do it at any point in time. She's just like, hey, wherever you're at, it's okay. However far you can bend, however far you can reach, whichever way you twist, however far you can go there, just be there. Not everything has to be the perfect yogi pose. And I think that is a huge like factor, a huge deterrent for people where they're like, oh, I don't want to go to a yoga class. I can't do that. I can't stand on my head. I can't fold myself into a pretzel. Well, hey, guess what? With a home practice, you don't have to. And really no one will judge you because no one can see you in your own home. Unless you have roommates or a husband or wife or whatever you've got at home. (laughs) But really, all we have to do is just escape our own judgment. And if we can stand up to ourselves for that, right? Because I'm not going to lie. The abusive relationships that I've been in in the past, like, they have had a mental toll on me. They've opened up those pathways in my brain to say like, oh, abuse and trauma is chill. It's fine. It's not fine. Stop. We need to, as a society, I want us all to stop saying that this sort of stuff is fine. Because it's not. Like, if I were to want kids, if I were to have a child, like, I sure as hell would not want to have it with someone who's abusive. If they're abusive to you, what are they going to do to a child? What are they going to do to a dog? What are they going to do to a plant? Like, if people aren't respecting you, they're not going to respect the things that they build with you, the things that they share with you. So we really have to just, hey, start with ourselves be nice, right? I'm, I'm dealing with this foot pain 
And instead of being like, ah, it's the worst, I suck, why did I run, I'm never running again, that's one pathway I could go. I could totally victimize myself to the whole thing, or I could take, honestly, some responsibility, because I know I haven't been stretching the way that I want to be, the way that my body wants to be stretched, the way that my body wants to be moved. I mean, that's why I brought up yoga is because, I mean, honestly, there's so many different ways to move your body that just allow, like, the rotations and the, like, hinging of your joints. Maybe one day I'll have Matt on here and he can talk to you guys about cars, controlled articular rotations, but it's just all of your joints, like, they are they deserve to be moved. They're here in this lifetime. That's their job, you guys. Like, it is to move around, to twist, to hinge. Allow your body the gift of movement. Because once you allow it (laughs) the ability to stretch and pull, you're really able to find a relax in it, right? Finding that relaxation When you're going through a yoga practice, sure, in the beginning, maybe it doesn't feel great, but allowing yourself to find that relaxation, like usually muscles, it's inflammation. It's a tightness, it's a soreness, it's something that honestly, it just chill out, bruh. (laughs) Muscle, chill out. Like It's going to be all right. Give yourself the love that you deserve because you deserve it. And I wish I could give it to you. I wish I could hug you, virtual hugs to you all for episode 25 because I'm feeling alive. I don't know about you. <laughs> Thank you again for my, for your patience while I went to Seattle. I really had such a beautiful time up there. I always forget just how much I miss the trees and the crisp air until I'm there, but ooh, it was beautiful. Everyone there was sick, though. I am so sorry for everyone who lives in Seattle. That is just a nightmare for how sick everyone is all the time. But um, I was up there for a good two weeks, and I got to see some family. I got to see just a few friends. I actually did end up getting sick while I was up there. Weird stomach bug, you know, but sometimes you want to do all the things, and your body says, hey, maybe we need a break. And in my later years of life, (laughs) I really like to listen to my body. I really like to try and respect what it's telling me, to grant its wishes. You know, think of, think of me as the prince and princess bride. And anytime my body asks for something, I just go, as you wish. (laughs) But such a good time in Seattle. I'm so grateful to be able to go up there Um, to be able to help out with my sister and my niece. My niece is just such a beautiful little girl. She is just growing up into just, oh, such a little precious. It just, I can't even, I can't even, I can't believe how fast she's growing up. Kids grow up so quick. It's insane, but I love them. I love to hang out with them. I love to color with them. I love to tell them that they can do anything that they want. And if they want to craft, I am so down anytime. Like, when kids come over to my house and they see my craft room, they're like, what? Can we do it all? I'm like, yeah, dude. Dude, If we had the time, we totally could do it all. (laughs) What should we start with? (laughs) So, episode 25, you guys. It's so great to be here. I'm happy to keep on chugging along with you. There's definitely more things to come here on this podcast. We are going to continue to grow. Because why? Death is not an option. (laughs) So, in order to keep us growing, in order to keep expanding that community of ours, don't forget to like, to rate, review, and subscribe to the Broad Points Podcast. You can do so on social media, at Broad Points, or you can follow me, at Tyler the Lady. (laughs) And if you want to send me an email, you sure as heck can, partner. I would love to hear about it. Broadpointspodcast at 
gmail.com. And throwing this in at the end here, I'm not going to lie, my zero shoes were fantastic in Seattle. I only brought zero shoes to Seattle, actually. As history would have it, three pairs of zero shoes made it to Seattle. I had my Breckenridge boots, I had my Prios for walking, and I had my Dylan slip-ons, because sometimes you just got to be casual with it. Wear a slip-on, come on. <laughs> Honestly, the whole no shoes in the house thing, I get it. I respect it. I do want to implement that in my house. I like the idea of having and keeping clean floors. I don't know how people put boots on for it. (laughs) Dylan slip-ons might be the answer for you. And if you want to get me paid when you buy those Dylan slip-ons, you absolutely can. You can go to my affiliate link. Zero shoes slash go slash Tyler the lady. And that's zero with an X. Why? Because they're edgy. (laughs) Now, one more time just to wrap it up, put a bow on it for you. Let's hit you with that fundamental phrase for the week. We either grow or we die.